Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. We greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to this biblical series where we had been talking through um, carnality and spirituality, or how the carnal deeds are fighting against the spiritual deeds, and how Bible prescribes encourages us to overcome the old man versus the new man. Right, all things have passed away. I'm born again in Christ. Is what Bible says. Um, so we will be skipping a little bit of introduction and get into the subject because we want to cover majority of the remaining concepts and see if we can close um, this study on the truth about the spiritual desires because this is our sixth session where we had been continuously talking about the spiritually minded person's thought process how. Uh, he or she would be thinking through uh, things of the world in a, from a spiritual angle, in the middle of challenges, in the middle of the hardships, in the middle of battle. The way how they would be thinking, or, or they means the spiritually minded person would be thinking, will be far different from a person who is carnally minded. Um, in, in the course of that, that discussion, right? Um, in the last session, we had been talking through about the uh, the spiritually minded person, how he would never get into a kind of a worrisome way of living life. Nothing can trouble his heart. Nothing can make him uh, to be worried about the futuristic perspective, etc. And we spoke about it. You may want to listen to it. Now, today, what we will be discussing is, uh, hopefully, this will be our last session. And then next session, we will be uh, getting into the uh, study of um so ne ne next thing will be uh, to study about the um the law and the grace right that is what we had been discussing and telling you from the beginning so we will shortly resume on that study in detail and then we will have a comprehensive idea of how law works and how grace works both are important both are important okay the spiritual minded person will look at his body always as a living temple of Christ right or the living temple of the Holy Spirit turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 um, verse 16 let's start with that and slowly we will go through various scriptural references right the way how he will be conducting his walks talks desires <clears throat> excuse me in such a way that it it he will be very mindful that it must must not be displeasing the reason is because first of all before going to 1 corinthians 3 16 he will remember 1 corinthians 6 20 what is that for you were bought at a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are gods right the bible is very clear that you are purchased for a price that means you are a property of god you are earmarked those days how they purchase slaves are they will get slaves and uh, slaves will be given the time that seven years or something like that in the Old Testament. And then after that tenure is over, they will be giving that opportunity for the slave, whether he wants to continue with the master or not. When he says, yes, I like this master. He treats me so kind and uh, he's, he's well, uh, he's, he's well uh, treating me and all that. The uh, slave is in other words vouching that he will want to remain as a slave for to his master for the rest of his life therefore they will be a uh, kind of uh, what is say um what is it earmarking him with the ear ring right and that's why bible is against see in the in the in the new testament world if you are having the ear ring it's a old way of uh, treating a carnal man that you are bound to certain slavery. But after Jesus came, salvation is pronounced and um, <clears throat> salvation is pronounced. Um, there is no concept of bondage or slavery. That's why you shouldn't have these kind of earrings, especially men, right? Uh, women, I leave it to your I leave it to your, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to your imagination. It's up to you. However, the Lord leads you, please do it. But man, especially. So this concept is uh, very much applicable to the bondage and slavery. And the person uh, pierces that earring. The master will be piercing the earring into his 
um, uh, years and then he is going to be a slave for the lifetime likewise here instead of earring it's the name of jesus and his blood that's as good as like an earring hanging around our ears yeah and here the earring is nothing but the whole body yeah which is the manifestation of god's glory in you god's sacrifice in you and therefore everything that happens in your body in and through your body in and through your life you should always remember it is god's problem or it's god's glory it's god's victory it's god's prosperity it's god's success if there is a defeat you should say god yeah if i'm defeated you are defeated and you it's it's your problem not mine such a person will have that kind of ah superb maturity that he will not be mindful of anything okay and another uh, uh, commandment is 1 corinthians 3:16 do you know that you are the temple of god and this then and that the spirit of god dwells in you you will always be mindful of two things one you are purchased for a price you are pro you are a property of god and the second thing is you will be no way submitting your thoughts or surrendering your desires to the carnal demands to the carnal pressure to the worldly pleasures why because you are mindful of another reason is the spirit of god that is dwelling in you you're going to displease the lord you're going to kick him out in other terms or you're going to op- show him the door get out of my body each time you end up you know getting into some sort of worldly pleasures some dirty things and you know what are they you don't know what are they they can read second timothy chapter 3 there are at least 20 to 25 items given there <laughs> which i don't want to even speak in my mouth even i feel little uncomfortable talking about those things i don't know how people practice those things uh however we have done a beautiful series about passive sins there are 20 different sins that are being discussed uh yeah please go through that it will be a blessing All right um so people who get involved right or get carried away with those kind of sinful deeds never get reminded that they this body doesn't belong to them that's why people would say look at my body what happened to my body god is not aware god is very much aware why because it is his body you think he's not aware what i go through i don't know whether god is listening to me or watching over me 100% is watching over you because he is inside of you 1 john 4 4 great is he within me within me within you right that's why a spiritually minded person will always look at his body as a temple of god and he will no way give importance to the carnal desires but rather always you know be abiding in the laws and commandments and the instructions of god and and preserve his holy deeds turn your bibles with me to ephesians chapter 1 verses 22 and 23 and he puts all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the ch- to the church here is referring to father and jesus okay J- father gave him all authority over the demonic forces that all the sins and the demon forces and de- 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 the powers of darkness are right under his feet and the same authority is given to us roman 16:20 for the head of the satan is crushed right under our feet when you honor your body as a living temple satan is right under your feet yeah but if you honor uh, if you don't honor or if you dishonor the body through the worldly pleasures you are right under the feet of the devil this is the only way i i could think of what the bible is explaining either satan is right under your feet or you are right under the feet of mr devil that's what happened to samson he was always on the bosom of some lady or on the lap of some lady finally that it will become a trap for him similarly you need to really watch out on your carnal desires how you treat your body okay uh, however here that power what was given to jesus we can we have the grace to inherit the same powers and that's the power behind the name of jesus and verse number 23 says that which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all all in all we are filled in abundance you know the grace of god is in abundance it is at work in us 
and it is his body again it is you know quoting the connotation here and the and the quotes here are referring to the same concept what we referred in 1 corinthians 6:20 it is his body time and again how many verses to show so whenever something happens to your carnal system infliction sickness problem trouble everything right um you get injured anything remember god feels it god hears it god is with it within itself within the problem it's part of the problem yeah and we don't have to uh, treat god like a deaf the uh, god or a you know blind god or a lame god no he's within us he can feel he can feel the pain he can feel the grief grief and he's he can feel the trouble that you're going through that's the confidence you will get when you walk in the presence of god when you walk in the light of god all right we have some more things to cover therefore we will move on the next thing we are going to talk about is spiritually minded people will always realize the the place wherever they go they will try to treat it like the church right some people the behavior changes the moment they get into the church the dressing changes these days dressing also doesn't change much but i'm just telling you the behavior at least changes right they worship god they talk with reverence in reverence politely no bad words no unparliamentary language all of this happens only inside the church but spiritually minded people even they go to the toilet they will continue to pray to god and even the dirtiest place wherever they live they will still protect their reverence first of all they won't go to dirty places but i'm just telling you if at all there is a situation they ended up there then also they know how to safeguard turn your bibles with me to romans chapter 15 uh romans chapter 15 verse uh, 25 to 27 will be our meditating verse but now i am going to jerusalem to minister to the saints for it pleased those from macedonia and akakia to make a akaya to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in jerusalem it pleased them indeed and they are their debtors for if the gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things their duty is also to minister to them in material things here paul is making a point that the spiritually minded people most of the times they end up to be misers right they give lot of offerings to the church but that much of uh, charitable attitude or empathy they don't show towards their own family members or their their neighbors or whatever is what he is trying to say here uh, however the people who are gentiles having that attitude is not well seen right that is something that we all can learn to improve if a spiritually minded person will not measure and give he will give in splendid measures and not just to the church where he goes ephesians 416 is another reference that i could think of from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in itself in love one way of looking at this uh, i mean the temple of god is you and you yourself i myself and me the other way of looking at it is we are all members of the same body and the head of the body is head of the church is jesus that means you have a role to play if god has appointed you to minister the word of god you will do it effectively efficiently edifying of itself in love right that's the growth of the body now what happens is you are a member and there is another member who is doing a different ministry and therefore you start fighting with him and become a hindrance what happens the body won't grow causes growth of the body for for the edifying of itself the, the body's growth will be stopped this is what is happening in christendom each one throwing tantrums and heresies against each other and complaints and grumblers and even some people filed cases against each other in the law of court for, you know um these are some of the shameful things that happens in christendom even today but we all should treat each other like brothers why because a spiritually minded person this is how he will ensure the church grows and he also grows and he will be edifying the word of god i can show you one more 
reference 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 1 um, chapter 1 verses uh, 7 to 8 yeah so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe for from you the word of God has sounded forth not only in Macedonia and Achaia but also in every place your faith toward God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything what he's trying to say here is the believers in Christ not only expose their spiritual deeds within the church. That's exactly what we are trying to say. Your spiritual deeds will go over and beyond. You will become examples of what is written in Acts 1.8. You will be taken as examples, instruments of God across the ends of the earth. You will be used as testimony. Your life should have testimony for that anyway. But point here is like you will not limit your spiritual growth, brothers and sisters. You won't pick certain houses and you will gather there one day in that house and the next week in this house, that house, this house. Like that the whole, you know, 10 years go, go, you know, passes by. If you have gone into ministry, why are you limiting your growth with certain boundaries and peripherals? That's what it's, it's not supposed to be, is what Bible admonishes, right? Yeah, we shouldn't have any boundaries. It should be limitless. You shouldn't be having partial deeds. Yeah, there is one group of people who are white and white. I will not tell which is the church. They will help only the people who come to their church. They will not even, like para churches, they won't help. They won't help other missionaries. Nothing. You come and join our church, we will help. Yeah. They will give and take, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, girls, brides and grooms, etc. Within their uh, community only. And if at all they go, they are cursed are they. They will be expelled out of the church. That's not the right attitude, right? Limiting, limiting boundaries. They're good people. They spoke the, they speak the word of God. They have a great, con, they they have registered a great contribution for the word of God uh, to grow across the ends of the earth. Yeah, I'm also one of the benefiters. I am not denying, but they have a problem. All right. Now what happens is the carnally, contrary to the will of the Lord, um, the carnally minded people. Want the church of, I would say, entertainment, the church to be transformed as a place of entertainment rather than the church of Christ. The church of Christ is filled with the reverence, right? The reverence, the reverential way of preaching the word of God on the same pulpit, they'll be dancing like devils. I've seen when Christmas season comes or when the birthday parties happens and all that, they will be dancing. There is a church in Bangalore. People will definitely know that church. Known for these kind of events all the time. On full day, they will be celebrating that pastor's birthday. And they will be distributing cake and all that. And they will be calling him with all great names and complete rubbish. Anyway, the point here is you cannot share the pulpit, the glory of God for your own uh, entertainment. Or, you know, some people have fasting and prayer for one hour. But the eating time, after fasting and prayer, they'll be cooking lunch and the serving lunch and chit-chatting will be for the next six hours. Turn with me to Romans 14. See, we are not speaking without biblical evidences, right? Always. 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Even if you gather together for fellowship for 10 minutes, if the power of the Holy Spirit is revealed, if there is manifestation of the Glory of God. That's enough, brother. Time doesn't matter. Yeah, we are not against food and drink. Bible is not against food and drink. But with what limit you use it or with what distance you keep it away from your spiritual desires, that really matters. Yeah, people fast to eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't eat they don't eat the previous night to fast the next whole day but they fast okay so that i can have a uh, whatever a heavy lunch many churches are like this i I've, I've, I've been part of few churches too that's not the right attitude that's why we gave you a verse but turn with me one more verse we can read colossians chapter 2 um the book of uh, colossians chapter 2 Verse 18 to 23. We can read it quickly. Uh, Let no one defraud you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshy mind. See, some people, especially in Catholic 
um, churches. I was, I was a born Catholic. I told this in my testimony. You can subscribe to my channel, but testimony is in Tamil, but um, Tamilians can understand. But I'm telling you for those who do not know Tamil, um, I was born and uh, in, in the Catholic congregation, God touched me at the age of 18 and I was, uh, I, I came out of the parish of the Catholic congregation. <clears throat> then afterwards, it was a long journey. Um, but then it's pointless to talk about it now. But point here is in that congregation, I've seen <clears throat> they will be having statues of angels and stuff like that. And people will have prayers to make to angels. You don't have to do that. In fact, you know what? You have to go through this Know Your Enemy series. First two sessions we have explained about the angels and demons. We spoke about that in detail, how angels became demons and what is the duty of angels, etc. Beautifully described, two hour session. Okay, you have to go and listen to it. But praying to angel is not right. Why? Because uh, when the seraphim and, and the cherubim, they covered their wings with their, fa their face, they covered it with their wings and they said, no glory to us, give glory to God. Yeah, for we are his servants. That's what good angels do. As much as the angels have understood, people have not understood. Um, so it's vainly puffing up in your flesh, man, not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase which is from God. The glory is not given to the head of the church, that is Jesus, but they get distracted. Some people even take prayers through Saint Anthony, Saint Mary, and uh, Mother Mary, sorry, and uh, Saint. Paul and St. Peter. Oh, Peter, please plead to Jesus for us. Peter himself told, don't come to me. Go to Jesus. Because they were about to sacrifice a bull for Peter and John. Gold and silver we do not have. Get up and walk. They immediately went and, you know, brought a bull to sacrifice uh, and, uh, you know, equate them to the to the Lord Almighty. They, they were tearing their clothes and running around. Then they were about to stone them. When you tell the truth, they will stone them. When you pamper people, they will worship you as God. This is how the Christendom is running today. Either it is this extreme or that extreme. Okay. Um, so, the glory should be always given to the head of the church. Therefore, if you died, I mean, I'm at Colossians 2.20. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why are you still living in the world? Do you subject yourselves to regulations? Yeah. Here he's talking about discipline. They are talking about a carnally minded person will be never subjected to the discipline even in his human anatomy versus a spiritual anatomy. Physically or spiritually, both ways he will be sluggish, glutton for food and all that. That's exactly what Bible says. You should hold to some sort of discipline. Discipline. Okay. Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. Are you very clear? Bible can't be any clearer than, than this, right? Do not touch anything which is going to defile you. For example, your neighbor's wife. Don't touch them. Or some other um, things which is going to defile, defile, cause any kind of defile, defilement. Do not taste. Do not taste. Alcohol, only one sip, brother. I just want to have a taste how it is. Only one puff of this drug, brother. Finished. One, one inch, one centimeter, one micro centimeter is enough for devil to hold his, hold his feet. And then slowly he will expand his territory. That's why in the borders, Indian Army, Navy, everybody are watching over the enemies that they are not expanding territories. Then also we had... Chinese folks entering into our Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, and etc. We lost so much of land. Because why? We didn't take pay enough attention. And now it's too late to chase them because they have already come into our territories. Always there is tensions in the borders, you know. And that borders you need to watch out. Right? And do not handle. Don't never ever. See, always don't project yourself as a spiritual brother and get into some sort of problems. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, brother. If there is a fighter, come, let us sit and discuss. I will solve it for you. Don't enter into things that you cannot handle, brother. You don't have to necessarily solve everyone's problem. Yeah, and even if they come to you, oh, please counsel us, brother. You need to counsel only if it is deserving enough, right? They'll be talking about some property dispute. You don't have to sit and counsel for that. But they have a spiritual dispute, then you sit and counsel it. This is how you should discern. 
Bible is very clear. A carnal minded person, how he thinks. A spiritual minded person, how he prefers the choice of things. It will all perish, Bible says. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility and the neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Clear, right? I don't know how to explain. This is how a carnally minded person will get pulled towards the worldly desires or worldly pleasures. The other way of looking at this is, the, the see, we are talking about the spiritually minded person will treat his body as a temple of God. That is the contrary to that. The carnal minded person, how he treats his body is what we have learnt and you know discussed. He will get into all unnecessary things, unnecessary habits, unnecessary talks, unnecessary um, relationships, companionships, and he becomes an enemy to God. Bible says that. Carnal minds see buildings and physical things while the spiritually minded person, right? He sees the church as saved people. It's a little tough to understand, right? Now, this is how we made our notes. Acts chapter 2 verse 47. See, entitlement is always important, but explanations will be given. Don't worry if you have not understood the titles. But without title, explanations cannot be given either. Acts 2 47. Acts 2 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. This is actually a very good commandment, right? Having favor with all the people in the sense you have to pursue peace with all the people. That's another commandment. So here what they are saying is adding people, not only the Jewish people, right? Gentiles. It could be Muslim brothers. It could be uh, Sikh brothers. And it could be uh, Hindu sisters. It could be anyone. We need to have that kind of fellowship. So what happens is, you may be a spiritually minded person. There is still carnality in you. That's what I told you, right? You are biased with the principles of your church. Only our people. You should have the boast in the Lord agreed. If they have not accepted the name of Jesus, they cannot come and just live as a Hindu brother in the church of God. That is not allowed. You accept, you please come. You don't accept. We will meet outside privately. We will explain you. Please attend certain classes, spiritual classes. But you don't, you don't have any part in the Lord's table until you have baptized. You need to go through baptism. That is all needed. Right? Um, but some people take baptism to get married to a Christian girl. That is against, uh, again, that is against the Bible again. Uh, it, the pastor should watch out not giving baptism to such people for a specific purpose. That too for a worldly desire. Right? Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 verse 27. 27. Uh, if you take and read, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. We have read this many times, right? 1 Corinthians 3.16. Uh, we read it in Ephesians. We read it in, uh, again, 1 Corinthians 6.20. Again, we are reading in um, 1 Corinthians 12.27. What it says is, um, you every individual must have this feeling that God is within us. Many people have misconceptions of when you when you go to church, that's where you will feel in like one body, different members of the same body. No, no. When you are all alone also, your body is the temple of God. You should have that feeling. This COVID situation, especially many people have not gone to churches for a, for a year or so. Yet, they have grown spiritually a million fold. Why? Because they learn to spend time, their private time with God. That is very important, brother. More than you going to church, don't stop going to church, but more than you going to church, this is important. Okay, um, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, now, if you look at the spiritually minded people, right, they have one more good quality. They will always do things that pleases God. And even if men get offended because they had to make a choice to please God, Actually, they don't care. They will not bother much. I will show you a verse. John chapter 4. Uh, John chapter 4, verse uh, 23 to 24. But the hour is coming. But the hour is coming. And now is when uh, the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. 
for the father is seeking such to worship him god is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth again spirit and truth truth and spirit what is this truth and spirit brother the spirit will always reveal the truth and the truth will be always bitter to the world you look at the eyes of some sister and tell that without any flattering lips hey you know what i see some sin in you this is not the way the place that i work uh, there was a female reporting to me and i have still that guilt in my heart and that and that lady is a married woman and i know a little bit about her family background because uh, she she reports to me uh, however she was flirting with a person um, a different person working in the same company he is also married and they had this kind of um, <clears throat> what to say marital affairs yeah that's what you call it as illegal affairs and they used to do all sorts of nonsense which i don't like to explain but it's about the lust of the flesh and you know what i had the guts but i didn't have the authority to go and interfere in her personal life why because it's a corporate world there is a boundary we can only deal with official matters personal is person even the hr human resources is not going to allow that's not the law of the company but you know what is the law of the lord in christ you will have to go and tell them instill that corrections in them boldly and telling them the truth this is wrong else you know what that soul is going to come and cry and even now also i know that what i have done is right because i cannot exceed the limit but some day i am waiting that i could tell this truth to her therefore i could make this soul repent and save her from the guilt make her realize that responsibility you have when your neighbors they are defaulting when your family members they are defaulting when your co-workers are defaulting you have the responsibility as a spiritually minded person to tell them the truth they may hate you they may hate you to death they may even try to harm you but doesn't matter you have to tell the truth if you don't that soul will come and cry on the day of judgment this guy was uh, working with me for so many years he never told me the truth we don't share the gospel right they may be good brothers and sisters but very orthodox and completely into some tradition and yeah you know what they do is not right but you will not even make a simple effort to share the word of god on circumstances which will favor you to tell the word of god then also you would not open your mouth you are scared it's not right it's not right worshiping in spirit and truth means it's also to share the word of god being a light Uh, to this world hebrews 12:28 is another beautiful verse which i would like to show i mean every word of god is beautiful to read isn't it 12:28 28 therefore since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken any kingdom is shaken take the history right any kingdom would have gone through slavery and then victory independence but kingdom of heaven kingdom of god had not tasted any kind of failure that is one kingdom which never will go through any failure cannot be shaken let us have grace by which we may serve god acceptably with the reverence and godly fear you are part of that kingdom you know um, bible says in matthew 6:33 seek the kingdom of lord and its righteousness seeking means what seeking through your carnal system your body but with reverence conducting yourself carefully when you walk across the uh, you know corners of the world which is filled with pleasures deceit you know false teachings false witnesses so many things happens so you need to safeguard yourself your reverence this is what a spiritual spiritually minded person will be mindful okay the carnal minded person we will talk a little bit about him also right doesn't understand the scriptures that will be the last thing and we will close the study on truth on truth on uh, spiritual desires this will be our last uh, session but we are not ending the episode hang on um, the carnal minded person will either not understand completely or misunderstand and mislead others 1 corinthians 3 i'm turning my bible to so 1 corinthians 3 1 2 3 okay uh, sectarianism is carnal and i brother and could not speak to you as to spiritual people but as to carnal as to babes in christ because he's seeing they don't have maturity for that age it's okay for this age if you say oh we are still babes in christ brother you will have a bigger judgment to account to give in the day of judgment 
<laughs> i fed you with milk and not with solid food for until now you were too you were not able to receive it and even now you are still not able see how he is reemphasizing right some people just go they you know warm up their seats sitting in the church for 20 30 years zero percent spiritual growth zero percent materialistic growth also just like that i have seen so many people how even i would be sick to look at them i will turn my face this side look at god like how we will be looking at you same imagine your child is studying in first standard for 20 years but he is the first rank holder how would you feel first rank holder in first standard for 20 years is talking about the maturity of the child or it's talking about the um some deficiency of the child deficiency right you don't look you don't feel proud by that time he should have become a graduate and also you know gone and to work somewhere and he would be already a manager or something else that's how paul felt how many times to tell the same things in different ways yet you are carnally minded you don't grow in your uh, spiritual system which should dominate your carnal system for you are still carnal look at verse 3 you are still carnal man many churches are uh, you know leading people in the pathway of carnality and very less of spirituality is felt there the reason is because this they don't understand the doctrines properly they don't know how to teach it or they don't they have a, they have the resistance to tell the truth either of this is true right and divisions among you so for you are still carnal from where there from where there are envy strife divisions among you are you not carnal and behaving like mere men what is the difference between you and heathens you don't deserve even to talk about jesus to those people is what paul is trying to say here very true isn't it we do have lot of strives within the churches and we do have the same mentality same fear same worry same concerns what way you are different what way is your speciality revealed in christ when there is even a hint of carnality spiritual lessons cannot be understood that's what you are exposing yourself to be even if there is one percentage of carnality in you which means you are spiritually dead it should be zero percent that's when you are spiritually sound right now turn with me to 1 corinthians 2 13 to 14 uh these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god for their foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned you try talking to a uh, to a person belonging to some other denomination or some other religion uh, he will also start some people who respect each other they will also start talking about their uh, god and goddesses yeah yeah it is like that we also have all that they will not have that understanding and that's why we need to pray for such people and we god will bring them to us you don't have to go to them yeah because why 1 corinthians 127 but god has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise and god has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty we may be called as fools see bunch of fools christians fasting prayer all the time taking the bible reading how many times to read the bible ha huh? same thing only is written there no 20 times you read also will it change word of god won't change but your life will change brother that if you tell no you are called as fool you will appear as a fool to this world that's why i read this words for you but actually who are the fools in the eyes of god they are and you don't have to go and wage war with them ah you are the fool look at this word it is talking about you fool you don't have to talk like that <laughs> that means you are the real fool if you are having if you if you wage war against or if you are having a rage against your brother is your brother too isn't it he is created in the image of god jesus died for him also this is how you will respect god respected jesus respected that okay those who are spiritually minded will have, will set aside all things that 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 emerges as a hindrance or a blocker to their spiritual growth i will show you one verse we are going to close in a moment hang on 
1 Peter chapter 2. Um, I'm, uh, can you turn your Bibles with me? Trying my best to turn fast, but I couldn't. 2, 1, 2, 3. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Did you notice? Being slanderers, talking, uh, teasing somebody in their absence, or complaining somebody about in their absence. Verse number 2. As newborn babes, which means what? You cannot say, I'm, I'm a believer for 30 years, but can you control your anger? Can you control your mouth? Can you control your eyes? Not lusting after that female? You are a babe, which means what? You are you are a child inflicted. You are a special child. Like, you know, special children, right? They, their brains won't work properly. And they have a special school. You are as good as that. God will look at you as a person who is inflicted with the disease and sickness in your mind and heart. And unfortunately, you won't have an entry into the gateway of heaven. And yes, newborn babes desiring the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Here, Peter is also talking about babe and milk. That Paul also spoke about the babe and milk. Both, both these guys, they uh, spoke in uh, different uh, tents and different places. But you see the Holy Spirit, how he implants the word in them. That you may grow pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Those who have felt that God is gracious will not have this kind of baby talks, baby behavior, kindergarten standards. They would always like to progress forward in their life. All right, brothers. We are going to conclude this study, which we had, had been discussing for almost six sessions now, six or seven. Truth on spiritual desires. A spiritually minded person, how his thought process works is what we had been discussing in detail. And as a conclusion, as a conclusion or a closing note, we will read just one more verse. John 663 John 663 turn with me to John 663 it is the spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing I, I stressed on that word nothing why because all that you do for flesh is going to be nothing at on one day because when you're physically dead it will be nothing anyway doesn't mean you shouldn't take care of your body no, I don't mean to say that right Uh, sorry, John John 6, 63. Uh, yeah, I took away my eyes. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life, brother. If you are a carnally minded person, you want to come to the spiritual side, you need to understand that the words of God are life and might and you cannot count it light. When you apply on your body, when you apply in your mind, when you apply in your heart, when you apply in your ways and talks and thoughts and decisions and judging things, you one will have to see and realize God in it. That's where you are called the child of God. That's when you are called the child of God. All right. We are ending this session. I'm very happy. Holy Spirit has led us so beautifully. Therefore, we'll sing a famous song. Um, I'm, I'm just. Just taking my book. Um, my life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. You know, all of you know that hymn, right? We will sing quickly, okay? My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope. Is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you, my life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you, I'll praise you with all of my life, I'll praise with all of my strength, with all of my life. All of my strength, all of my hope is in you. My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. In you, it's in you. My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. In you, it's in you, it's in you, my Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We bow down 
and we want to thank you from our heart lord thank you for revealing to us these truths of from the gospel and thank you for helping us uh, to be always engaged in the spiritual discussions thank you for shedding light in our hearts and to our thoughts and every brother and sister that are listening uh, to these words of god may there be transformation in their spirit may there be renewal of mind and please lead them by your side in jesus name we pray we bless them amen god bless you and we will shortly meet you in the next episode this episode comes to an end episode number four we, we will continue uh, in this concept of discussing overcoming carnality through spirituality but we will be talking a little bit about the law and grace grace refers to the spiritual deeds law refers to the carnal deeds and how these two systems judge is what we have to discuss it's going to be a slightly a tricky session not easy to explain these days um, when it comes to law of moses whether it's as good as like comparing old testament versus new testament in a holistic measure so it's going to be a little tricky but we will depend on the grace of jesus and the leading of the holy spirit and we will see how to simplify things and um, you know have these sessions uh, uh, conducted okay god bless you stay tuned we will meet you with episode 4 soon